Tyrants, Tormentors, and the Tiara by James J. Meadows III, Chapter 6 No one saw the attack coming. Xenophia didn't even see the dead bodies scattered around the clearing until a bright red glint drew her thoughts back to the present. A crimson liquid ran along the ground, staining the white snow beneath. Her eyes followed the trail to a horribly disfigured body wearing wizard robes. Her mind snapped to attention. Her eyes shot up to scan the clearing. She started to yell a warning, but the words never escaped. A massive form slammed into her, lifting her off the ground. She felt sharp, three-inch-long claws bury themselves into her flesh as her attacker hoisted her into the air, throwing her aside like a rag doll. Xenophia fell several feet away before skidding to a stop. She lay in shock, overcome by the pain from the bloody gouges in her stomach. The sound alerted Clement and Lillian. They looked up in time to see the beast fling the necromancer aside. Their attacker stood over eight feet tall and almost as wide with bright red eyes. The upper part was manlike with a powerful chest, muscular arms, clawed hands, and dark scaly skin. The grisly mockery of a centaur possessed the lower body of a spider. Eight hairy protrusions connected to a large furry torso and raced across the ground at an incredible speed. Clement and Lillian barely summoned their energy before it crashed through their ranks. Charging between them, its massive arms swung outward. The left fist hammered against Clement's hastily summoned shield, knocking him into the middle of a large thorn bush. Its right arm collided with Lillian's shield, smashing through her defenses and slamming into her chest. Waves of agony shot through her body. The force of the blow sent her crashing to the ground, where she disappeared beneath the snow. It charged Darian, but his distance from the rest of the company gave him time to counterattack. Marushnoya, he shouted, slamming his hands together with a loud clap. The snow around his adversary congealed into large walls of solid ice, which collided together like a wintry Venus flytrap. Large chunks of icy shrapnel tore into its flesh, but it seemed unfazed. The beast continued charging, the walls shattering as they crashed into him. Darian attempted to dive away from the advancing monster, but its claws caught him. Talons sliced into his left arm, spewing blood across his green robes. The attacker's momentum carried it past Darian, but it whirled around for another attack. It leapt into the air, landing above his fallen form. Its left hand hovered momentarily, claws angled downward, preparing to impale Darian upon the razor-sharp blades. The enchanter conjured his magic into a desperate attempt to block the attack, but the coup de gras never came. A shout rang through the air. Nasakamoya Ebivat! It came from Lillian. She had managed to raise herself into a crouching position and held her right hand toward the creature. A dark, lime-colored streak of light issued from her fingertips, striking the spidery abdomen. The creature froze mid-attack, more from distraction than pain. It swatted away the beam, which left only the slightest mark as an indication the attack ever occurred. Still, Lillian succeeded in getting its attention. Its eyes locked onto her. She attempted to cast another spell, but with a roar it sprang into the air, landing only inches away. She tumbled to her left, staying low to the ground to remain a smaller target. The monster's arm plowed through the snow, scooping up the tumbling sorceress and launching her into the air. She soared above the powdery earth, crashing into a tree. In a thorn bush beside the tree, Clement fought furiously to get untangled from the barbed vines. Nasa Kamoye Abivat! Clement shouted, his voice a mix of anger and sarcasm. Were you trying to swat a mosquito off of him? It was. First spell came to mind, she gasped, striving to regain her breath. Didn't see you do anything. With a final jerk, Clement ripped free, tearing several more holes in his already damaged robes. 
Lillian rolled onto her stomach, still gasping for air and struggling to lift herself from the ground. The creature made another lunge at Darian. The enchanter was ready for him. Using a jumping spell, he leapt over its head, landing just inside the edge of the clearing. With an angry roar, it chased after him. So Silica, Darian shouted. Giant icicles sprang from the snow. The sharp, icy daggers shot toward the creature's face. Again, the fiend barely slowed, smashing the projectiles away like gnats. Desacria! Clement shouted. His face fixed with concentration as he released the black bolt from his hands. It slammed into the chest and abdomen of the monster. For the first time, the beast let out a shriek of pain, staggering as the spidery legs gave way beneath it. It recovered quickly. Ignoring the deep tears and cuts oozing green blood from its side, it bound through the air, landing before Clement. Weakened by the Desecria spell, Clement stumbled backwards as the creature's claws raked across his body. He screamed in agony as blood coated the ground. Clutching his side, he collapsed into the snow. Healing spells issued frantically from his lips as he strove to maintain consciousness. Muchizia! Lillian's voice rang out. She was back on her feet, leaning against a tree for support. From her hand, a dark burnt orange light struck the creature, wrapping around its waist like a fiery whip. The beast howled in agony, backing away from Clement. At the same moment, two other voices burst out. Napadot! Darian shouted. A beam of red light, with sparkling green balls, swirling inside like fish in a bowl, hurtled toward the creature's exposed back. On the opposite side of the tree from Darian, Xenophia was on her feet, blood soaking through the front of her robes. Purlome! she shouted. Purple light burst from her hands. Sounds of crackling, snapping, and tearing, mixed with screams of pain, issued from the beam. The spells barreled down upon the monster. In an amazing display of agility, it collapsed into the snow, curling into an unnaturally small ball and rolling several feet to the left. The spells flew above its head, and it resumed its feet. A loud, gargling sound issued from its mouth. Lillian prepared to cast another spell, but an enormous, sticky net of rope-like materials spewed from its maw. The web encircled Lillian, pinning her helplessly against a tree. Two foes disabled, the monster charged its remaining enemies. Shetch! Darian screamed, red light flashing from his hand. Kavachit! called Xenophia, an orange beam flaring from hers. The creature seemed to realize the element of surprise was lost, for it acted more cautiously. It leapt into the air, performing a somersault as it raced across invisible webs in the trees above. The incantations flashed beneath it. It landed before Darian, snatching him from the ground and slamming him against a tree. The sounds of cracking ribs filled the clearing as his body collided with the piney wood. The monster tossed him away dismissively, turning toward Xenophia. She dashed into the clearing, unleashing another spell. Pirulome! She screamed. Her adversary sprang into the air, but Xenophia had anticipated his movements and aimed high. The incantation struck the creature's massive underbelly, and it roared in pain as it skidded along the snow less than a yard from her. She tried casting another spell, but the fiend struck first. Pouncing upon her, its hands swung together with the intention of smashing Xenophia. Her arms shot out, grabbing its wrists and pinning them away from her body. For a moment, the two stood locked in a deadly stalemate, the brute's demonic strength against Xenophia's superhuman might. But the necromancer was badly wounded, and the beast over five times her size. Her pale face turned red, and the needle-like claws slowly closed in upon her, waiting for her strength to fail. Gasping painfully, Darian clawed his way up a tree until he stood upright. He surveyed the fight and raised his hands. The crackle of magic filled the air, but no spell came forth. Clement rolled onto his stomach. Blood poured from his side, soaking the ground. With a monumental effort, he struggled to his knees. 
he spotted Darian standing frozen in apparent indecision. Do something, he shouted. Darian hesitated, rigid and unmoving, like a petrified sorcerer caught in the act of casting his final spell. Finally, Darian burst from his mysterious trance. De Sacria, he shouted. The stream of crackling black lightning burst forth from his hands and shot toward the combatants. At the same moment, Xenophia's strength failed. The monster's left hand broke from her grasp, knocking her into the snow. Darian's spell flashed above her, slamming into the beast. The spell proved fatal. Weakened by the attacks of the other wizards, it gave one last howl of agony before going limp. With a crash, the massive body fell, scattering snow and ice into the air like dust. Its spidery legs curled inward, and everything became still. Darian collapsed to his knees. He lay kneeling in the snow, panting for breath. For several minutes, no one moved as each muttered self-healing spells. Almost every magic user knew at least one spell designed to regenerate their wounds, even if they knew none for healing others. Clement felt his injured side. Though still painful, the gashes were sufficiently healed for him to stand. He rose gingerly from the ground while Lillian disentangled herself from the thick web binding her. Xenophia also rose to her feet. Flushed with rage, she spun to face Darian. She marched toward him, her expression livid. Darian watched her approach, rising to his full height, which almost put him at eye level. Xenophia was covered with blood and sweat from the battle. Her breaths came in hard gasps, yet she stood aggressively before him, her face inches from his. What? took you so long to cast the stupid spell. I could not decide whether to cast the spell on the monster or on you, Darian answered. For a moment, Xenophia glared at him. Then her body relaxed. The tension drained from her muscles as she cast a contemptuous look. Well, I'm surprised you chose to target the monster. He didn't, you dits. Lillian interjected as she walked by, now free from her cords. He fired the spell at you. The monster knocked you down at the wrong time. Lillian walked off toward the body of the fallen beast. Darian held his head up high and strode past Xenophia, slamming his shoulder against hers. Xenophia's smirk grew, and she gave a satisfied nod. Makes sense, she said. I'd have done the same thing. Turning around, she followed after them. Clement did not. He wasn't interested in the monster. A short distance away, a collection of human remains lay on the ground. The bodies were badly mutilated, but Clement recognized Queen Sylvia's insignia on their garb. He guessed they were one of the parties pursuing him and Darian. He crossed the clearing to examine them. The corpses were mangled and disfigured. They had lain there for many hours, perhaps since last night. Most appeared to be soldiers, but two were not. Their robes marked them as high-ranking members of the Rorian Magical Academy. One was a female. The other was mutilated beyond identification of gender. Each possessed shoulder bags. The unidentified figure still wore one, but the woman's bag was resting on the ground. Apparently, she threw off the pack during the battle. Deep tears and gouges indicated she had used it as a makeshift shield. Resourceful, thought Clement, but futile. He lifted her right hand, running his fingers along her own. During his reign, Clement developed an expertise in magical identification. The rare skill allowed him to recognize spells cast upon an object by the markings and enabled him to identify spells cast by a sorcerer through steadying magical residues. Clement spread apart the fingers, touching the tips. He felt a number of rare and powerful spells clinging to her skin. She was a learned battle mage, perhaps even a general, and put up a good fight. Clement lowered her hand and picked up the shoulder bag. 
Water dripped from the bottom, and he observed a shattered glass canteen resting inside. He rifled through the contents, a folded letter, a small circular wooden box, and a pile of wet parchment. Clement pulled out the wooden box and examined it. The top appeared to twist on and off. He unscrewed the lid. Inside was a thick green goo, like an emerald mud. A strong, nauseating smell radiated from the mixture. Clement moved the stuff away from his nose, replacing the lid. Magical healing balm? Lillian asked. Clement looked up to see her standing over him. Apparently done examining the monster, she had wandered over. Darian and Xenophia were still examining the beast. I guess so, Clement said with a shrug. I've never made this stuff, but I read about the potion once. It matches the description. Pocketing the balm, he reached into the bag to examine the other items. Lillian strolled over to the other bag. Removing the strap from the dead spellcaster's neck, she joined Clement in rummaging through the dead party's possessions. Clement pulled a handful of papers out of his bag. They appeared to be magic scrolls. With a loud rustling, Clement vigorously shook the papers, attempting to get the water off. Darian turned toward the noise, and Clement saw him scowl. Abandoning his examination of the monster, Darian crossed toward the scavengers. Xenophia looked up too, but merely smirked at the pillaging before resuming her study of the corpse. Anything good? Darian asked, a hint of accusation in his voice. I'm finding out, Clement said, unabashed. He tossed the miscellaneous scrolls to Darian, who caught them. Clement reached back into the bag, withdrawing the folded letter. Unfurling the document, he scrutinized the contents. It appeared to be nothing more than a simple decree ordering an unnamed general to lead a group of soldiers in search of Darian and Clement. Yet something wasn't right. The paper was the only thing in the bag that remained dry. Fidelius paper, Clement thought with a smile. The Archmage Fidelius designed the enchanted paper during the Obsidian Wars to allow nobles to secretly communicate with their generals. To a novice or unsuspecting reader, the letter contained only a simple message of the writer's design. To someone capable of recognizing the parchment, the text contained a more sinister secret. Facus, Clement whispered. The writing grew blurry and out of focus. A second later, the original text had vanished, replaced by a long letter written in a hasty scribble. Clement scanned the document. Pretty basic scrolls, Darian said, oblivious to Clement's discovery, only of use to weak or moderate spellcasters. They're perfect for you, Xenophia jeered, joining the others. Darian ignored her. Here, Lillian, a gift. He tossed the papers to the spymaster. She gave a Xenophia-like smirk, but said nothing. Listen to this, Clement declared, leaping to his feet. Clement held up the letter, reading the words in an official tone. General Gahira, before beginning your quest, I must inform you of suspicions brewing in my mind. I confirm I lack the magical powers possessed by you or Cornelius. Nevertheless, I am convinced not everything is right at the castle. When I found Darian and Clement in the Queen's room, Sylvia was nowhere to be seen. The window to her room was blown out, and they appeared to be examining a strange cloth. The High Mage theorizes they destroyed the window, sending the Queen through the portal. But why would the wizards not escape through the window with her? What was the strange cloth stolen by Darian in the dark? Cornelius explains away my questions, saying the ways of evil are strange, yet it still doesn't make sense. The guards were frozen in place to give the impression they were keeping watch. If Darian and Clement plan to fight a loud battle and blast open a window for everyone to see, why not simply kill them instead of giving the illusion that all is well? I suspect someone inside the castle had a hand in Sylvia's capture. I question whether the Queen was really taken by Darian and Clement at all. I think someone beat them to the Queen. The cloth might be some sort of ransom note. 
Perhaps Darien and Clement are using it to track the truth thief for their own devious ends. In any case, I believe someone inside the castle paralyzed the guards. Cornelius feels we should focus on an enemy we know rather than speculating about some unknown enemy. I admit, my theory is a stretch. Perhaps I'm just paranoid. Still, if you're able to apprehend Darien and Clement, please search for the missing piece of cloth. Second, if you recover the queen, please alert her to the potential dangers waiting inside the castle. I sent similar letters to General Andrews and General Alexis. I myself will be in the traveling party with Cornelius. Best of luck be with you, Commander. Signed, General Cordor, head of the Queen's personal guard. Clement lowered the letter. Wow, Lillian said. He's sharp. Indeed, Darian agreed. He took the letter from Clement and scanned it. So, the man chasing us was General Cordor. I have heard many things about him. Me too, Xenophia said. There was no trace of a smirk on her face. I'm not comforted by knowing he and High Mage Cornelius are working together. I hear he is a Moradin, Lillian said, checking her newly acquired canteen for cracks. What is a Moradin? Darian asked, looking down at her. A human born with a bizarre abnormality, making them immune to all magic, Clement answered. They're extremely rare. Less than one is born each generation. That explains why he was not affected by our magic, Darian observed. Moradins are easy enough to defeat, Xenophia said. Just cast spells on the things around them rather than on them. I wouldn't be worried about him or Cornelius alone, but a Moradin and a powerful sorcerer working together can be a lethal combination. Each can compensate for the other's weakness. I wouldn't worry too much, Lillian said, picking up the scrolls and flipping through them. They're looking for Darian and Clement. If we vanish before they see us, we don't need to get involved at all. Xenophia looked at Lillian with disgust. I swear, you're the most spineless brat I've ever seen. Bravery is just another word for suicidal, she replied. And what if they see us first? Xenophia asked. The searchers will assume we're in league and come looking for us after they finish off these dimwits. Nice insult coming from a talking zombie, Darian said. And when they find us, I don't want my only support to be a pathetic weakling like you, Xenophia finished, ignoring Darian. Hopefully their party went south or west, Clement interrupted. These corpses are probably the only party sent north. Probably, Lillian agreed, but they likely sent a party east also. They might head for the Pass of Ridian. I doubt they'd go there. Clement said. They have no reason to enter the mountains. They probably followed the main road toward Buried Grove. Unburied Grove, Darian corrected. Would you stop that? Xenophia snapped. How many search parties were sent after us? Lillian asked, looking up at Xenophia. When I left, the plan involved sending four. One going each direction, Clement observed. And each led by one of Sylvia's mightiest generals, Darian said. Of course, Andrews is a weakling, and I would not mind facing General Alexis. She was the only military strategist to ever outmaneuver me on a battlefield. I owe her one. Clement understood the Enchanter's feelings toward Alexis, although he wasn't so quick to dismiss General Andrews. He glanced down at the female corpse, resting at his feet. So, this was General Gahira. She led a powerful assault force through the southern part of my realm during Sylvia's invasion. She was a powerful sorceress and Sylvia's oldest friend, Lillian said, standing up. She was present at my surrender and very civil to me. Whoever the traitor is, they were clever to split up the search parties, Darian observed. 
together, Gahira, Andrews, Cornelius, and Alexis would be a powerful force. Divided, they are vulnerable. I doubt they were powerful enough to defeat this creature even together, Clement said. What was that thing, anyway? Not sure, Darian said. I have never seen anything like it. Whatever it was, it wasn't here by chance, Clement stated. Notice how none of the bodies show signs of being eaten. The creature ambushed them, made sure they were dead, and went back into hiding. I don't think that's entirely accurate, Zenafi replied. The bodies aren't eaten, but there isn't as much blood as I'd expect. The creature might feed off drinking blood. An interesting theory, Darian agreed. With that and the monster's unique magical properties, I suspect we are looking at some kind of demon. What? Zenafi exclaimed, staring at Darian. Demons haven't been seen in millennia. They have now, Lillian said. Such a keen observation, Xenophia scoffed. If that's the limit of your intellectual brilliance, I can understand why you don't own a single scholastic award. Pretty pathetic for the headmaster's daughter. Lillian flushed. She opened her mouth to retort, but seemed to think better of it. Instead, she yanked a few scrolls from her bag, burying her head in the papers as though interested in their contents. Perhaps, Xenophia said, pointing at the letter in Darian's hand, I should be entitled to a better explanation regarding this mysterious cloth and the true nature of the threat facing us. Lillian and Darian both glanced at Clement. He shrugged. I suppose you should, he said, but the explanation is long and I don't want to lose any more time. As I remember, the armored planes are just a few hours away. The shattered hills are only five or six hours from there. You should know as many times as you invaded me through the area, Lillian muttered. They're a good place to camp unseen, Clement continued. Once there, we can talk in a safe spot. Though she seemed reluctant to do so, Xenophia acquiesced. Without a word, she whirled around, marching through the snow. Darian turned, strolling northward, a short distance behind Xenophia. Lillian stood for a few moments, hovering like a vulture, scanning for anything else she might consider valuable. Then she checked to make sure her newly acquired shoulder bag rested securely on her shoulder before following the others. Clement took up a marching position behind her as they departed the clearing.